electric cars. They come in all shapes and sizes, prices and ranges. Everyone's making the move to electric cars, but we don't hear much about electric trucks. Check this out, it is a Fuso e -Cant. it's an all-electric truck. Okay, first and foremost, price and range for this piece of magnificence. I can't actually tell you the price because I don't know what it is, but I can tell you that if you're interested in one of these after this review, talk to Fuso, they can do you a deal. Range, however, up to 150 Ks per charge, and I know what you're thinking because I was thinking the same originally. Surely that's not enough. Well, then I spent some time in one, and it turns out that there is a wealth of city-based applications for which this vehicle is perfect. As for tech specs, the Fuso e Canter has an AC motor with a peak output of 135 kilowatts and 390 newton meters of torque, two-speed regen braking, and a max payload of seven and a half tons. It uses a standard 3.4 meter wheelbase and a 750 millimeter frame, which means bodybuilders, no, not that kind, the other kind, can bolt on existing bodies and builds onto the rear frame from food delivery boxes to even motorhomes. And as you can see in this cool promo footage I stole, the vehicle layout possibilities are pretty broad. All this is interesting, sure, but I know what you're thinking. Only a maximum of 150 Ks per charge. Is it really usable? Well, as I found out when I went for a ride with Car and Haslam hauling cars around Auckland City, the answer seems to be yes. So yeah, we've got about a half hour drive depending on traffic. Okay. Um, the Henderson rides for me on the electric is one of the longer ones, the shore as well. Motorway usage. Um, drains the battery faster. Have you noticed, like today, it is blowing a gale? Does that play a part with the range, or have you ever noticed? No, the, even the weight doesn't play too much of a part, unexpectedly. You, I mean, you'll feel it when we, we take off. Okay. Um, it, it's still, you know, very, very much like you've got nothing on the back, so I'll just do a little bit. It's not moves bad. all right, <laughs> considering we've got two tons of car behind us. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, obviously, I'm not going to do that every time I no. take off because <laughs> <laughs> my battery range is going to suffer, um, just like any, any car would. So we started at 99 Ks. Mm -hmm. um, we have a detail of the times that I charge. You know, every time I come in, I just record the time and date. So you're just grabbing bites. There's, there's no major charges unless, you know, I can see at the end of the day, you've got 45 kilowatt hours, but most of them, just eight kilowatt hours, Four yeah. kilowatt hours. So wherever I can coming in. Yep. Uh, so I'll come in with a car. And charge it's charging up. fast. You've got all these post charges. 99, 66, 50, 99, 95, 93. It requires a dispatcher to be aware that, okay, well, if you're going to start me off with a long trip, you know, 90 k's return, that's it. I'm done. <laughs> you okay. know, but at the end of the day, I'm still, you know, pushing 8 to 12 cars, uh, which is what the other guys are doing. Oh, so what's what's the attitude to the the typical, you know, the, the diet on the wall, you know, um, the guys? How do they what do they think of the electric vehicle? Oh, probably a little bit. Like, oh, Skeptical. Yeah, 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 a little bit. And I mean, most of the boys are on the big trucks, so you know, it's all diesel anyway. Gotcha. Yes. I mean, they they do listen, they do ask questions. How is it going? You know, and then so if you're not used to electric, you just you know might power on off all the time, and you can't really do that to keep the battery lasting as long as you can. So. There is, there is definitely a, an attitude to be taken on how you drive it. So do you get, do you get a lot of looks, like this car hauler dude going past there, do they pay any extra, extra attention to the fact that this is electric or they don't notice? They probably don't notice, like unless you, you might see the E, they might catch your eye uh -huh. on the side, but you look at it, it's just like another truck when I take off. Sometimes people, what the? What the? Yeah, right, yeah, because yeah, if you're sitting here, like the it's, it's a very industrial area, a lot of diesel trucks, and if a truck takes off that makes no noise, it's going to get my attention. Yeah, yeah. And and the best thing about the electric, I think, for a truck is the ability to keep up with the traffic. Because most trucks, you know, if they're fully laden, they're just very slow and Working delays in the lights, yeah. and you, you know, it does affect traffic flow effectively. With an electric truck, that doesn't exist anymore. It's just instant, you're just keeping up with normal traffic. And I think that will make a big difference to traffic flow in the future. Right. I can't get over the not just the lack of noise, it's obvious, but the lack of rattle. It's a really tightly made truck. Yeah. I've been in a lot of you know electric vehicles, larger electric vehicles, and there's a bit of rattle going on. But not yeah. this. So on the motorway benefits are is the regen braking. Yep. As opposed to using my brakes. Um, which is good for the durability of the 
track and the cost of the track because you know you're not having to buy brakes more often. You don't know what the, the price difference is to run it compared to a diesel version, do you? Yeah, uh, so the, you, the electrical cost compared to diesel and road user charge. Now remembering that road user charge might apply one day. Yeah. But for now, um, yeah, it's, you're, you're saving 75%. That's fairly tempting. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So we're heading to Henderson, right? Yes, we are, yeah. What's in Henderson? What are we picking up? We're picking up an MG. Oh, okay, right. So we're dropping off an MG and um, we will be picking up another MG that is being dispatched to go uh, through to uh, Wellington. Okay. What sort of driver's license do you need to operate this? This is a class two, so it's under 18 tons. Driving without anything on it, you could actually drive it under a normal class one. Okay. Because it's under three and a half ton as a truck, I think, so. But once you get laid and up, yeah, no, it's, you know, it's plus better off, yeah. work, work hours and... I was checking, I've got, because I lived in the States, I've got an American driver's license and there on a regular car drop license, you can drive something up to like eight tons. Really? It's yeah, madness. yeah. It's madness, it's madness. Oh, those big RVs too. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, like, can, yeah. you can operate one of those on a car license there. That's crazy. 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 Yeah. <laughs> Have you noticed the difference in range laden and not laden? Not much, no. The, um, obviously, it, it will affect it. Um, but because obviously we try and load up the truck as much as possible. Yeah, and interestingly with this, you know, the important thing for a truck is to keep a constant speed. Yeah, I can keep a constant it's... speed up a hill. You know, I'm, I'm not losing that much of a speed. That's beneficial for business where, you know, you can keep up and, and you're not delayed just because your truck can't keep up. It is truly the future for trucking companies. That's a stupid question to ask, but how does it feel driving it without any diesel noise or vibration? It's, it actually makes the day a whole lot more relaxing, right? Because you're, if you think of a diesel truck, I mean, obviously these are, the normal canters are a bit smaller. It's, it doesn't have that big roar or anything. But overall, you are more relaxed. You are feeling less drained. The, the noise factor does impact you, even though you might not realize it. Um, so it's, it's so many benefits for the driver as well as for the company. We made the 25 kilometer journey across Auckland comfortably and cleanly in order to drop off one vehicle and pick up another. Something Dylan does up to a dozen times daily, sometimes driving as much as 300 kilometers in a single day. Okay, so what's the process? The process as efficiently as I can. Yep. So because I'm reloading a car, I take the straps off and I just leave them ready to be restrapped afterwards. Gotcha. If I wasn't, I'd just tie them away straight away. I have the ramps down before the last strap is taken off. So I've still got one strap to hold the car. Oh, yep. And I put the last ramp down just in case. Gotcha, yeah, no, fair enough. It's just safety. sure that they're straight. It's a beautiful sight. Electric car hauling electric car. That's awesome. <laughs> what about the, the ground clearance? What sort of limitations do you have in, uh, in terms of getting really low flat vehicles? Most cars we can get in, get on the flat deck um, because of the angle and the ex of the tray there. Um, the only limitations might be some of the GT3s with a lower um, valance at the front where it extends a little bit more. Okay, um, right. A lot of the cars these days have got adjustable uh, suspensions so you know you might have a super low car but you can get them raised a little bit. Um, if, if we do have a, a car that is too low we do have a special truck for that flatbed that comes down. Gotcha. I've done the paperwork, we've dropped off the car and picked up the next one. So we've just driven all the way across Auckland, how's the battery looking? The battery, we are sitting at 78 k's, which on this is quite good because it's a 100 k range when I start. Okay. So 78 percent. Okay, so it should be around about maybe 50 percent-ish by the time we get back? Um, well, no, because funny enough, going, we'll be going more downhill, oh. so the region will help a bit. As much as possible, I try not to reverse in the truck. Yeah. 
Have you got a reversing camera? I've got a reversing okay. camera. So there's a lot of safety features on this that are beneficial. What's that noise? Is that, that is, is that actually microphone it's on a microphone the... on the oh, reversing okay. camera. So it's really beneficial. So you might have someone say, hey, watch out. Okay, okay, cool. So yeah, good to know. Oh, you got cup holders as well. I know. Oh, brilliant. I, <laughs> I got two cup holders, all the important stuff. Open and I got drink. an extra one here. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> Three in total. I can have friends. <laughs> There's a combustion truck towing the combustion version of the MG ZS and we've got electric towing the electric version. Man, this is fantastic. It is pretty cool. And it's it's really interesting to see people converting their minds to, you know, from maybe they thought, oh no, I'll never go electric oil, to actually this is more than viable, not yeah. not just, you know, the power that you get from any electric vehicle, but the range as well. And I've seen that a lot in the last few years. I've had some, you know, from friends of the family died in the wall, oh, electric cars, you know, it's just, it's never going to happen. And now they're messaging me saying, hey, I'm, I'm looking at going electric. Uh, what do you recommend? So <laughs> it's really changing. We headed back down the motorway to where we started, with it being obvious everywhere we look that battery powered vehicles in all shapes and sizes are here to stay. But how do you ensure that they're 100% clean? Well, that's my cue to plug Ecotricity, which makes these videos possible, being the country's only carbon zero certified electricity provider. So if you're sick of paying for fuel, head to ecotricity.co.nz and see how much money and carbon you can save by running your house and car on power from only wind, hydro and solar sources. And while you're there, check out the EcoSaver plan, which offers New Zealand's cheapest off-peak carbon zero certified electricity at selected times each weekday and all weekend, every weekend. So check it out and come and join the good fight at ecotricity.co.nz. Just down this little hill part on the Mount Wellington exit. I can get some grey regen up to a K sometimes, depending on how fast or slow I've come off the motorway. Oh yeah. So it's quite beneficial. Adam, how are we doing battery wise? Ah, so we started at 99 Ks and we are down to 62. Our total uh, distance was 52 kilometres. Okay. So we should have been down to 40, what, 47? And we are at 62. So that's pretty good. So that's the regen braking doing a lot of the work there. Regen, yeah. Okay, so you've got two optional chargers here. You've got a, approximately what's it, 25 kilowatt DC yeah, charger. Yeah, so we've got the fast charger and the overnight charger. Okay, gotcha. So it's got the double plug for the fast charger. Yep. Otherwise, the single plug. Single for plug the, for the trickle charger yeah. for overnight. Yep. So, what we do? I'm not going to do the Tesla tap tap. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Using the high power DC charger, the Ecanter can charge it up to 50 kilowatts, meaning that by the time Dylan's unloaded and reloaded fresh cargo, the truck's got more than enough juice for another delivery anywhere in Auckland. Now, even though I'm a huge fan of electric vehicles, I was skeptical that the truck's range might not work. But after seeing one working in the real world and working hard, I have to admit I'm impressed. It's not only useful, but it's dirt cheap to run. So I'm looking forward to seeing but fortunately not hearing more of these electric trucks on city streets very soon.